Today I was flying and I landed the copter and picked it up and I, I don't know, adjusted something, I don't know what. And I set it back down again to start flying again. And as I set it down on the ground, uh, it power cycled. Like I didn't notice, I didn't see the lights go off or anything, but it went, you know, it made the initialization tones and the beep, beep, beep that tells you that the gyro has uh, initialized. And that was pretty weird. Because uh, I haven't had any power issues in flight. But it definitely power cycled. <clears throat> so uh, I had one more battery to fly. So I flew that battery carefully. I stayed close to the ground. I did low altitude maneuvers so that if I suddenly lost power, I wouldn't uh, end up in the top of a tree or falling from 70 feet. And then I went in and I, I checked it out. And I plugged in the battery and I... I wiggled and jiggled the connect. I, I jiggled everything. I jiggled the solder joint here. I jiggled like this. I jiggled solder joint here. But I was pretty sure if there was, there's two places I was thinking as the likely candidate. And one was the XT60, something in the XT60. Like it's not uncommon in my experience to have this, this solder joint wear out, especially if you haven't used silicon wire. If you've used just regular bare copper wire, it will it will work harden over time and it'll it'll crack and you'll you'll lose this joint or i thought maybe it could be the connection to my flight controller the 5 volt connection but actually uh i'm not sure that that would cause the escs to initialize i don't know about that but anyway uh but anyway i wiggled and wiggled at it and sure enough uh eventually it it power cycled and, and there was something going on in here and I'll tell you what it is. And so this, I have two tips for you. One is how to maintain your XT60 connectors for long life. And another is a more general tip and that is when you get a gremlin like that, like that one time when you're flying and you know you land and you get a power cycle for no reason, or you're flying and your video drops out and then it comes back and it's fine for the rest of the day. Don't just let that go. <laughs> like. So that, that, that happened for a reason. Something happened, right? The fact that it was fine for the rest of the day or that you've never had a power cycle while you were in the air yet, that, I mean, it's going to get worse. It's not, it's not going to get better, right? So if you don't want to be the guy who on race day, your copter won't power up for some reason and you're stressed in the pits trying to figure out what's wrong with your copter, instead of taking your practice laps and flying. Uh, when you get a gremlin like that, sort it out, figure out what it is. Something is causing it. There's always something and you can find it uh, no matter how mysterious it may be. And in this case, if you look very closely here at these, let's see how close my camera can get. If you look very closely, you can see that the XT60 connector actually has four prongs, right? One, two, three, four. Each of these pins is made of four prongs. And over time, those four prongs get squeezed inwards as, as you plug and unplug the connector. And then eventually it gets looser and looser until it starts to lose connection. And some people will actually take a little piece of plastic insulation from a piece of wire and stick it in there, down in the middle, to help them not get squeezed in. Oh, well, that's fine if you want to do that. That's a, a fine idea, I guess. I haven't done it. Um, but what you can do is you can take, I have a small Phillips head screwdriver here. You can take a small Phillips head screwdriver, and I like a Phillips head because there's four prongs here and there's four, it fits right in. The four sort of uh, tabs of the Phillips head screwdriver fit right in there. And, and there's no way I'm gonna get this to focus. Uh, and you can kind of work those out, right? Or you can use, I have a nice little, a teeny tiny, little jeweler's screwdriver here off my Leatherman. You could use a tiny little uh, hex key if you want. And you could actually get it down in there and you could stick it down in there and work the individual prongs if you like. And just squeeze those outwards and test it with a, with a spare connector, maybe, or with a live battery if you feel brave, but test it till it's the right tension that you want. You know, people talk about uh, the XT60 connectors, especially new ones, are sometimes way too tight. They're like, oh, yeah, you got to uh, you got to plug them in when you solder because the plastic deforms, 
and uh, it keeps it from doing that. And there may be something to that. But my experience has been that when an XT60 is too tight, it is usually because these prongs are too wide, not because the plastic is, the plastic is not what's holding it together. The plastic is pretty flimsy, actually. I mean, it's probably holding it together a little. But it's mostly the prongs. And if you spread those prongs way out, you'll be amazed at how tight your XT60s are. And if you have XT60s that are super, super tight, uh, take a take a needle nose pliers and just squeeze those in just a tiny bit, just a little bit on each side, and it'll loosen nice loosen up nicely. Give that a try. Also, if you have old XT60s that are starting to get maybe uncomfortably loose, you can spread them back out again and tighten them back up again. So there's my two tips: keep your XT60s uh, well adjusted and healthy. And uh, when you get a little gremlin like that, don't let it slide. Take the time to tra to chase it down because something's causing it and uh, better you find it on the bench than in the air. That's, uh, that's my tip for tonight. Happy flying.